You can see in this display we have some icons running down the detector vertically here and also an array of icons on the detector face here. Firstly the display indicates the name of the detector and the zone number, the type of the detector and what the name of the zone number is. In this case we've called the detector warehouse Wi-Fi. Down here you get a bar graph which indicates the smoke threshold. Uh, at the moment the smoke reading is at 0.0275% obscuration per meter and there are three alarm levels indicated on the bar graph. The first alarm level at this point here is the alert level followed by the action level and the fire one level. Presently the detector has got some latched alarms on its display being alert, action and fire one. To reset these alarms we simply push the reset button and the detector has now been reset and the alarms have been removed. Furthermore on the display we have a series of fault icons here which are, allow us to troubleshoot the detector. The first icon here is the general detector fault. This will, give, will be illuminated when there is a general detector fault. The second icon here across the top indicates aspirator fault. The third icon down here indicates there would be a flow fault. The next icon across here would indicate the presence of a power fault. This icon here indicates a filter fault is present and the icon next to that indicates that there is a problem with the laser chamber. The icon below down here indicates a VESDA network fault is present and finally this icon down here on the bottom right hand side indicates that there is a problem with one of the additional Statex modules that may be interfaced to the VESDA detector. Moving over to the next screen you're also able to have a look at the next screen which is the airflow indication screen. You can see from the detector that there are two pipes enabled, pipe 2 and pipe 3. Pipe number 1 and 4 has been disabled in the program and presently we're indicating 101% and 99% of normalised flow. Moving to the next screen we can see there are, is a filter status icon here. This will be spoken about in more detail. The reset button on the bottom of the detector can also be used to disable or isolate the detector. Holding the button down for a period of approximately 4 seconds will allow the detector to be disabled. You can see how the disabled light has latched on which indicates the detector is now in an isolated mode. So any alarms generated will inhibit the activation of relays. To return the detector to normal position we can hold the button again for a further 4 seconds at which point the detector has now been restored and it is available to transmit alarms should there be the presence of smoke.